jewelry? What are you trying to, you know? And it's like, what? Why do I, why am I, I'm not going to answer that. There's no reason to answer. Nobody should answer and come up with an excuse or a reason for the way you dress, for the way you have your hair, for whatever you do. It, you are unique. You're an individual. Yes, I wanted, yes. I wanted to just be me. There was no one else like that, and I, I wasn't out. Today, I'm here again with Richard Ozuna. Now, you're in for a treat, okay? So let me not talk so much, and let's go straight to Richard. Hello, Richard. How are you today? I'm doing well, Karina. Thank you so much. And and again, it's always a pleasure um, talking to you. And first of all, the the opportunity to be here with you on this on this podcast is really I'm I'm really grateful. And thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, it it's it's a great way for for us to to launch a message for all to see. And may it land, may it land peacefully. <laughs> thank you, Richard. Thank you for being here. And thank you for, for, for I know, because I know you're really busy. So to have the time to schedule this was, was great. So thank you for that too. Absolutely. Um, and, and yes, of course, may the message land wherever it does, it may, and may it heal and have a ripple effect. Absolutely, um, yeah. So that's the blessing for, for this um this podcast that we're having today. I'm going to ask you, because we know this is part two, we spoke a lot in part one, we spoke about a lot of things, but what I've been thinking about since I've been listening to part one and since we had that conversation is about Richard and Richard being so different to everyone else and standing out just with your style and oh, tell me a bit about that and tell me a bit about is it something that was deliberately done or is it just something that you felt along the way to create? So, so you're okay. So the question is, you're asking me about my, my somewhat style. Yes, is, your style. Oh, I mean, yeah, 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 you, yeah. You, wear, you wear all the jewelry. I mean, you, 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 you've got your own style. Of course, we know that you're a model and an actor. Okay. But that, you know, that doesn't I, mean anything. So tell me a bit about that. Where does it come from and why? I'll tell you, um, and, and this is a question for the ages because I'm asked this all the time. <laughs> you know, I think it was early on, I think my uncle was in um, either high school or junior high, uh, one of those. And he had, he used to wear this bracelet, okay? And I started to wear it, I started to make my own bracelet my grandmother would, would help me, you know, find pieces to, to make. And I would wear it. And he was making jewelry. And I saw him in the garage, you know, putting these links together, making a bracelet. And I, I, and I remember putting something on to emulate that. And from that moment forward, and it was silver at that time. It was actually silver. It wasn't stainless steel. Um, mm -hmm. So the fact that jewelry... The first piece of jewelry I had put on was I was I was really young, and I, it it just grabbed me and it 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 gave me a way of feeling comfortable with the piece. I've had multiple pieces throughout my life when I was younger. Um, they were material pieces, you know, that were woven together that were that were put on macrame pieces. Yes. I think I even had a macrame choker at one time. Just jewelry pieces as accents always intrigued me. Um, I didn't start wearing a lot of jewelry probably until maybe junior high, high school, and I was wearing gold. <laughs> and it, 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 it was it was like one piece, two piece, three piece, and, and all of a sudden it was like, oh, this is a lot of gold, <laughs> you know. But you know, time moved on, and I I didn't like the I didn't like the tone of the gold anymore. I just felt it was too too flashy and too it just wasn't for me. 
Mm, mm, mm. But then I started wearing silver and then uh, beaded stones, ceramic pieces, stainless steel, um, silver. And as my life went on, I was constantly picking up and, and, and finding pieces. And I have an assortment of jewelry everywhere. Um, and for me, I don't think the style of everything started to come out until, oh my gosh, it's really difficult to say. Um, I would probably say about 10 years ago. Um, I just started dressing just all in black. Um, I, I had a change in the way that I wanted to feel. And I, keep in mind, I never wore black as a kid. I didn't wear black shirts. I didn't wear black pants. I wore no, no black shoes. There was nothing. So the style transformed as the years went on. There was nobody that I was emulating. There was nobody I was trying to copy. I wore more jewelry than a, one human can possibly wear. It's like I just kept on piling, piling, piling it on. So I would have it from here to here, here to here. I had, I had, a, I had one picture where I had a, like five medallions with silver. I mean, I just wore it because I felt comfortable in it. I felt good in it. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, each piece I would find somewhere had a, had a meaning to it. And um, the clothing started to change where... You know, I was just throwing anything on. I wasn't out there to make a fashion statement. I wanted to feel for me. I yes. felt comfortable in it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most people talk about, you know, I, I know people when they have really long hair, that that's an identity that is a, that is something ab about you that once you cut the hair, it takes away your, your identity. I found that totally wrong because I had long hair. Yes, yes. Um, multiple phases in my life, younger and older. So when I cut it off, I felt liberated. I felt free. I felt comfortable. Um, clothes, jackets, everything that I would find, I just found that particular style. I don't know the name of it. There's no name. It's just I felt good dressing the way I did. Un and and at, at the same time, people were noticing. Mm -hmm. Um Christopher Holland, which is a young director, writer that I met years ago. I hired him to work in the marketing room. Um, never had experience, so I gave him an opportunity. Little did I know that would change the outlook of my life in, in a lot of ways. Because he was the one taking pictures of me and complimenting my style, and it started... Everybody, all of a sudden, everywhere I would go would just compliment my style. To this day, they still do. Um, so, and so he he took pictures. He took pictures, and he he had a collection of clothes, like pictures that I would wear, the jewelry, and how I communicated with everybody. Um, before, before he left the office, because I had to let him go, because he wasn't pr producing anything. I said, look, at Christopher, I gave you an opportunity. I wanted to see if you could do it. But unfortunately, you know, the record shows that you're whatever. But he pulls me aside and says, you know, I've been watching you, and I just, I, I dig your style. You have a unique style. Mm -hmm. There's something about you. And um, he goes, I'm going to be a director one day. I, I would love for you to be in one of my films. <laughs> sure enough sure enough yeah i'm i'm in two of his films we're in post-production right now and it feels so amazing to know that my modeling my film the characters are based on my style that's crazy i love that um mm -hmm. i love that and, and and what i'm what i'm hearing as well richard is that um okay we know you in la you know so it's very it's we all know the la culture and the la style it's very you know you know we won't go there but what i'm saying is you have the courage to be yourself and to to have your own style 
Okay, so yeah. how does that change the way you see things and the way you um, you are really in the world, right? Yeah. Well, here's the funny thing: this the this, the change of of that lifestyle of of my style of clothing and the way that I how I am started up in the desert. I wasn't in LA at that time. I was up north. I just felt a need to feel comfortable for me. So when I did go to LA or I did go anywhere else, people were looking at me like, whoa, 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 whoa. And, and to me, again, there, there, have, there have been people that have been on my side and love my style. And then there's been others up that come up to me and ask ridiculous questions. Why do you wear so much jewelry? What are you trying to, you know, and it's like, what? Why do I, why am I, I'm not going to answer that. There's no reason to answer. Nobody should answer and come up with an excuse or a reason for the way you dress, for the way you have your hair, for whatever you do. It, you are unique. You're an individual. Yes, I wanted, yes. I wanted to just be me. There was no one else like that and I, I wasn't out I, I didn't set out for any of this it was just something I felt inside and I feel comfortable today now again I'm going to be 61 in, in uh, probably four days but on the 29th I'm going to be uh, 61 and my collared shirts are going to be coming out more my slacks are going to be coming out more with with loafers T-shirts, V-necks, relaxed shirts. I'm older now. I feel a change of direction in some of my clothes that are still going to be my style. My jewelry is always going to be there. But I feel this is a different time in my life now because we're gearing, we're gearing for some new shoots. And it's going to be a more refined, over 60-year-old fashion model. And um, staying away from the desert shoots, staying away from uh, the gritty. We're going to get a little bit more refined and more more defined of who I am. Um, and I'm really excited about that. So I'm on a mission of locating other wardrobe that I feel I want to shoot in. Mm -hmm. So this is really, I mean, it's, it's really been a game changer for me in, in many ways, Karina. And I feel so confident in, in what I wear. And when, when we're out, the compliments that we get is just unbelievable. You know, there is an energy that we exhibit because we are both spiritual in that way. Mm -hmm that people just have this bright light walking through and they, they have no other reason to talk to us other than to say, Hey, I love the way you look. You look great together. We're, we're probably going to end up doing a couple photo shoots together. And I just feel like, you know, sometimes in life you're going to run around and catch dull, dull beings it's not that they're dull in their world. It's just they're not quite to the level of of your energy. I don't want to be around people that have low energy. I want to be around people that think like me, mm -hmm. think outside the box. They're their own unique individual and they harness that love and acceptance of who they are. And that's what I, I truly love about the expression of art, fashion. <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't take any modeling courses. I didn't go to acting school. I didn't do any of that. It's just for whatever reason, I felt that passion in me and someone recognized it and brought it out. 
I, I love this because you, you, it's, you're a prime example of showing everyone out there. So this is also speaking to our audience, right? Where yeah. it's okay to be yourself. In fact, that's the way you should be. It's okay to to have your own style. It's okay to be yourself. It's okay to to want to show the world who you are. And you need yes. to and you need to embrace that, right? And yeah. and move forward. Um, with being who you are rather than listening to all the, the naysayers around you. Uh, I just want to go back. Um, you mentioned how you're going to change your style now because you, you're in a different place. I know we spoke a bit um, off air and we spoke, spoke a bit last in our last episode where you were, this is a prime time we know that you are you are shifting there's been so many changes within your life right now so it's it's quite a it's quite um, auspicious almost that you are changing your style. Do you want to talk a bit about um, how your life has just shifted from um, just maybe a year ago or two years ago? Oh, I yeah. Know, and I know we've been, you've been sober for all this time, but, you know, people go on the ups and downs. And But I just, the, because it's been very interesting, like almost 360 shift, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I, I get you. And um, I, I think that change is the inevitable. Um, for me, I've had to reinvent myself so many different times yeah. in different phases of my life. When I was going through what I was going through in, um, in in my marriage and separating two or three times, four times, whatever it was, and leaving for a year, coming back, trying it, raising kids, dealing with my son who was who was having who was having a, a go at, at his life in active addiction. Many times with work, work came, work went, finance is good, finance is not so good, finance is depleted. I had to really reinvent myself on so many levels emotionally too. I mean, mm -hmm. going through emotional um, changes as well. I had to regroup and sit back and I, I always mention this on social media, anyone that I'm, I'm dealing with, um, Going back to basics, that means just stepping back, reorganizing your structured life in a way that makes it easier for you, and always case put it there first and foremost is never forget where you come from. Make each and every step a step of improvement. If you have to step back and reflect on something because you're going too fast, then do so. So change is the inevitable. And if you fail to change, you fail to grow. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there has been so many times because, you know, the way I dress and the way, the way my, my, my pictures are on social media that I, that we share again, and I, I want people to understand, I don't want you to make a mistake and misunderstand the message. I, I, I didn't set out to be a model. I, I it was that was the furthest thing from my mind. I didn't set out to get into acting. That was the furthest thing. I never even imagined it. It just happened. And for that, I change. There, there's change right there because I began to realize that some of the things that I didn't see with it within me, a lot of people were seeing. And if they see it, why cannot, why can't I see it? And mm -hmm. I ran with it. Mm -hmm. And in that same token, I want to keep the people engaged here. I want, I want them to understand that our page is to show the hope of discovery, the hope that uh, you can do this if you set your mind to it. Yes. Anything is possible. Yes. And if I can do it, you can do it. An yes. old cliche that I thought I'd never, ever, ever repeat because I didn't like it. But the more that I live and the more that I share, the more that I do, it is absolutely so important to say. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm proud to say, you know, I, I've been in the building trade in, the, in, in construction for the longest time. I worked with my hands. I create things. I love doing it to this day. 
I have probably four or five clients I'm working with and it's detailed custom work that is, it's, to me, it's fashion, it's art. It's an artistic way that I express myself. So I love doing that. And so I don't have the luxury of wearing clothes that are fashionable 24 hours a day. <laughs> so when I come home, when I come home and I want to just throw something on comfortable, uh, throw something on that's really nice that I feel good in, I can, I can spend the rest of my day or evening doing that. Mm-hmm. Or on weekends where I'm not doing anything that I just, I'm just going to lounge in clothes that I feel that I'm, I, I want to wear. But, you know, for me, I've been so busy. I've been, I'm still busy. So I really get the chance and opportunity to do that. Um, but when I do, I feel comfortable doing it. So that right there um, is, is how I feel that for me to maintain how a, a feel good lifestyle for me is to dress the way I feel, I see fit. And another message is, you brought this up, Karina, is like, you know, every one of us are individuals. We are unique in our own ways and we deserve, we deserve to, to live our life on our terms yes. without yes. someone, the naysayers, the people in the background trying to contribute their negativity and splash it on us for us to forever try to wipe it away. Because I've gone through that. And I'm pretty sure a lot of others have, have as well. But be yourself. Be you. And, you know, there's no other way that I can really put it. Yes, thank you. So that's exactly what it is. Be yourself and, and be una- unashamedly yourself. So um, unapologetic, unapologetic, you know, unapologetic. it's like, this is me. If you, this is me, what you see is what you get. Yes. So if you <laughs> like it, it's like that. If you don't, oh, well. Turn the page. <laughs> <laughs> or, switch off the, the, or, or continue scrolling or whatever it yeah, is. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, you know what? It, it, I think that's with everybody. You know, we're not. We're not made for everyone, you know. No, we're gonna not. irritate we're gonna irritate someone somewhere, you know? So yeah, that's where that's, yeah. that's that's the way it is. So now I'm gonna go back <laughs> to that question. Tell me a bit about the changes that have happened. Um if unless you don't want to, that's cool. The changes that have have happened in the past year that have have shifted your whole perspective about life. Because we remember we met about two years ago and and I have to say, the, the Richard I met two years ago isn't the same Richard that I'm speaking to today. And we know we've spoken offline that you've, there's been a lot of shifts and changes in your life. And, and I must say, you a brighter, happier, um, lighter Richard. And, um, and I'm not, so your whole energy has shifted. So tell us a bit about what happened to change that. Well, you know, I want to. I want to say this. I love being open. I love being honest of where I'm at and what I'm doing. You know, for many, many years, there was a dark, dark, dark energy in in me that I was going through major depression. Major depression. I was going through so many changes internally, mentally. Uh, even on the brightest, sunniest day, I felt dark. I would shut the curtains. I would stay inside my place, and I didn't want to leave. I took some time off from social media for a little while just to regroup. And going through everything that I've gone through, because you know, being separated, uh, you know, coming up on three years, I believe it is. You know, and being in a in a relationship, you know, that was really toxic. Mm-hmm. That's one. And then I think about the years prior to in another relationship that was toxic because I was I was an alcoholic. I was an addict. Mm-hmm. The relationship before I was an alcoholic addict just beginning. I just started my career. 
and then living in a household as well, too, as a young kid, teenager, young adult, that was dynamic in that chaos. And then stepping forward to the early part of my life, hearing from my grandmother that I lived a tormented life where my parents were constantly battling and there was a lot of attention. So that explained my anxiety. That explained a lot of things that I went through as a young kid that I, I didn't understand. Mm-hmm. So be, going through all that and having relationships and learning that, first of all, I didn't love myself. Yeah, I didn't love myself, I think, for the longest time. I would, Honestly, I would get up, look at myself, okay, cool. I got to go out and do my day. God, so many times I didn't want to wake up and face the day. I didn't even want to be here. Then, you know, each, in each in everyone's life that are that people that are going through it, you know, I mean, people that even that never even touched drugs, touch alcohol, touch touch drugs, they just have a self esteem issue that they're 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 dealing with, or mental illness, depression, whatever they're going through. Each and every person on this earth may not think that they have the ability to love or to be loved. So I went through that for the longest time. And then when you finally, finally, and this is for everybody, in a relationship, when you meet someone and that someone truly understands you and respects your, your journey, respects where you came from doesn't want anything from you monetary physically mentally on that just to to be selfish but to become one number one a friend Mm -hmm. to become a friend to listen to you for you to listen and understand that there is no hidden agenda. It is truly a genuine, great feeling to know that, wow, there is another human being out there in this vast universe that loves me the way I love them. And now I can give love. I can accept love. I can accept it. And a lot of people don't do that. And I think, you know, there's, I think we've heard the terms of self-sabotage. Oh, I was a master at that. I was self, I would sabotage myself constantly. I think that goes with everything that I was going through in my addiction, because I felt like I'm not good enough. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have enough money. I I don't, I, all these doubts, all these Mm -hmm. self-inflicted doubts that I went through. You know, and to be happy and and for me, the the shift, you know, I mean, at the time, two years ago or even uh, a year ago, you know, I was still going through a lot of a lot of things. And and um, it's like when you finally meet someone that understands you as a friend, as a friend. Knowing someone for two years, talking to them, never knowing anything, but knowing that you felt something for them and vice versa. But no one talked about it. No (laughs) one talked about it. Right now, I just feel truly loved and blessed. And I don't even... Okay, I so just, I just don't. I, I, it's hard. It's hard to explain. It really is unless, unless you're in it. 
Um, I love that, and I know we spoke. You you told me the story, which is a beautiful story. Um, but I'd like to know, Richard, what happened to make you realize that you know what? I'm Richard. I deserve love. I don't. I'm not this terrible person that I think I am. I'm this beautiful person that deserves love. What was it that shifted? And was it meeting her? Or what was it that suddenly shifted and made you realize that you deserve the love, this beautiful well, love? Well, you know, it was it, it was like this. It was about, you know, three years ago, We, if, if not more. It, it could have been, yeah, about three years ago, I was on a job. And... I I met and I just thought to myself, okay, I'm gonna meet, I'm gonna meet, I'm gonna meet someone someday. I always thought in my in, in my mind because I was going through a separation, going through everything that I was going through, and I just felt like I was un unattractive. I felt I was unwanted. I felt like I was not doing. I, I, I wanted something more. I wanted to to find someone that I knew that I can really, really be with mm. and 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 do everything with and not judge my past and not judge this and judge that. And I just looked at it this way. I was on a job. I I, I, I met with the client and these particular clients were were divorced. And one lived on this one property and she lived on the other property. And when I met, when I first met her, I just, she was striking. It was, it was, it was a connection that I felt no other connection to before. And we, we talked for two, two and a half, two years, whatever it was. It was strictly a friendship, a friendship. It was strictly a friendship. And there was a, a, a love beyond words that I couldn't, couldn't imagine, but I knew that there was no way, there was no way this would ever work because, um, her professional career and I just felt like, okay, there's just no way, no way, no way. And, um, at that time, I, I believe if I remember correctly, she was two years into her four year dissertation. So there was no way for anything to be talked about or dealt with on a on a on a, a dating level or anything like that. So I I didn't know anything about that. I just knew that I was working on the property, and <clears throat> I was friends with her with 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 her ex partner, and um, we all just we all just became really really close because we're friends. Mm. First of all, it's 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 we're adults first and foremost. Everything was done on on a professional level. Everything was done on a on on a way of respect for for the other. And um, two years, I think two and a half years went on. You know, we were sitting down talking, having coffee in the back, and you know, and and it's finally like, okay, she's a doctor now, and it's like, okay. I'm I'm me. I'm I'm not a doctor. Uh, doctor of education, which is the highest level of compliments you can get in education, and it's like, whoa, wait a minute. But I'm holding my own. I'm I'm holding my own conversation wise, intellectual wise, topic wise, subject. We're we're, we're getting along, but it was nothing. It was never everything thought of because. For me, there have been so many, I've, I've had hundreds of people, men, women, that I've talked to on a, on a regular. I've had regular people I've talked to in um, Australia. I had a phone call once every two weeks with a friend of mine in, um, in uh, the Iceland, I believe it was, um, and someone in the, U in the Ukraine. And then I had another one that I was talking to in Germany, then in New York, and we were just friends, you know? And I was never able to have a female friend in, in my relationship before because there was always a thought of, well, what are you doing outside of that? And I just got tired of dealing like that. And I was open mm -hmm. to say, look at, I, you know, I, I, I talked to many women, I talked to many men, 
and it's on the it's on the level of sobriety or people connect with me we talk we interact they're they're either going through something or i'm coaching them or they're just needing someone to talk to and so there was never even a thought of anything going in a different way it's just a matter of i like talking to people i love dealing with people mm -hmm. and so I didn't realize that once I made that, once I sent that text message, I said, look, I've been coming here for two, two plus years. I can't do this anymore. I, 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 my feelings for you have changed. I, I know we've been. Hey there. We just breaking from the episode for a moment. Just want to tell you about something that's really, really exciting. We speak a lot in this podcast about self-worth and self-doubt and self-belief. And so I have this very exciting challenge for you because what if, what if you could break down self-doubt and find self-worth and find those treasures within you so that you can show the world your value because you know and find your beauty because it's there. We just need to find it together. So I've created a five-day mini challenge. It's a one-on-one -on -one coaching experience. And together we will work through this and find those beautiful treasures within so you can shine your light to the world. If this sounds like something you're interested in, we've got I've got all the details on the pinned comments below this video. So Thank you for listening, and let's get back to this exciting conversation. Friends forever, but something's got to change. And um, got a message back and said, yeah, I feel the same. <laughs> I love it. What? All this time? What? <laughs> you know, so here we are today, and, and all of a sudden you meet someone, and you go, okay, cool. That's good. Wow, okay, great. But, you know... It all has to be with who you are. If you are someone else or trying to be someone else that you're not, you're never going to get far. I made, I made it publicly clear that I am going through some mental breakdowns. I'm having some issues and I need to step away for a while. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have the most wonderful therapist that um that work with me and i feel self-care self-love self-respect had to come first and foremost for me yes getting into a new relationship has to be for me right now has to be one of the most game changing events in my life you think, you would think that being married for 20, 30, 40 years, that, that would be the pinnacle. To some, yes. But I think going through failed relationships and going through and dealing with people throughout the past and finally realizing the one that you've been looking for has been looking for you. I love that. Some, somehow, some way in that universe... You know, I mean, we've been in path. We, we've we've passed each other's paths in many occasions, but never acted on it. We we it was always a professional, professional setting to say, "Hey, I don't want to ruin anything on a friendship level." But once you, everybody out who is listening to this, if you've given up on the hope that you're ever going to meet someone. Think again, because it happens at the most unique time in your life when you're not even seeking it. It just falls into place. After going through so many different worlds in, in dealing with individuals, dealing with the relationship or trying to deal with the relationship or trying to figure out a relationship, like, can I have a relationship with this one? But then you hear things and see things and wonder, no, I can't. Mm. No, I can't. Mm. Wow, what am I going to do? I. No, no, no. So please never, never give up on hope on a relationship because not only are you healing yourself because someone has finally shared their feelings with you 
as well as you sharing with them, it is never too late and never give up on the hope that you're going to find that person. And I love that. Um, sorry, sorry, Richard. I just want to cut you off for a moment because I, I want to ask you this question. It's, it's interesting how um, you had to do the self-love. You had to do the change within yourself to, um, to find to, so that the synchronicity would happen and you'd come together with I want to ask you, um, how different is she from your other relationships? Um, and and how now this is two part two part question right and how um, how has the self love and this growth within yourself changed the person that is compared to your other relationships so maybe it's the same question yeah, yeah I, I'm just I was just listening to that. it could be the same the same question well you know if for me being being that I would sit down and, and, you know, we would talk, we would have coffee and talk and we, we were friends. We were just, um, we were friends. She was my client. Um, and so sharing, sharing with her, my relationships and, and what I was going through in my marriage and going through past relationships and going through everything, you know, I kept everything open with her. She even understood my depression. She, I even shared with her my, you know, my, my downfall, uh, spiritually through my, through, through my breakdowns, mm -hmm. um, going through everything, but being that there was being that there was such open, open conversation, open dialogue as friends, she already knew who I was way before. So it was nothing new getting, going into a, going, getting into a relationship. There was nothing new. Mm -hmm. Because I had already shared all that I was going through, all that I was been through. And I even told her that, I, you know, I'm just all I want was I just want to meet someone. I just want to meet someone that I know I'm compatible with. I want to meet someone that shares my same beliefs. I want to share something with someone that that they love doing what I'm doing and vice versa. Or you make a compromise. And there is a big difference because, you know, with she is thoughtful, respectful. She is an educator that is beginning to be, that is be, that she educates people through spirituality, um, through the universe. She's a professional woman. And she, her strength, her, her, her belief in what she does wholeheartedly in her message is amazing and who she stands for as a human being as an activist and seeing that and being around that I mean two and a half I've known her now since well what, yeah about three years now knowing that and beginning to learn to know about her more is amazing. Amazing. I've just, I've just had to really step back and pinch myself and realize, hey, you know, a relationship is possible. A relationship is vital to one human to another one human to another mm -hmm. because it's that communication it's the communication um it's that it's that touch of one to another it's that feel of 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 belonging in a space where you know you're respected it's so different so different from what i've gone through in the past and I want to make I want to make it perfectly clear with everybody here that you know people you know are introduced to people and all of a sudden you think okay I don't know if I can do this this is just not this one's this is not for me and then someone else comes aboard and wanting to know you or wanting to be with you and it's like 
okay, I talked to you, I've, I've, I've learned some things from you. But then red flags come up and you think, no, this is not the one. And that, that could have gone on for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And in the past two relationships I've had, <clears throat> I consider them all marriages. One was not a legal marriage, but we lived together, been, we're, we're together so long. That was my high school sweetheart, my high school sweetheart. We moved in together, didn't work because again, it was me, it was me, it was me. I, was, I wasn't ready. And then my second marriage, again, it wasn't me. I was in my highly addictive state. And I had an opportunity to go back to, to, to her and let her know that, hey, you know, I do apologize for, you know, not being there and um, putting you through everything I put you through. And um, wherever there was an opportunity to share my remorse and, and my, my, my heartfelt I really do apologize for this, you know, taking away X amount of years of your life, you know, just so you could try to try to fix me. Didn't, you know, didn't. So being in a different relationship in, in, in a way where there's communication, where you talk, yeah. talk, yeah. talk yeah. is so, so much better for for everybody, mm -hmm. um, you know, because she, she had went through, she had went through her, you know, her, her marriage and, and, and problems that were going on. So we kind of mirrored some of the stuff that we were going through. So it made perfect sense. And again, who would have known after two years, you know, that the one person that you've talked to shared your life with, you know, as friends just shared everything and just poured your heart out that what <laughs> that would one day you know be be a partner be be someone that wanted to be with you be wanted someone to share your life with and say hey you know we've known each other so long let's let's do this so <laughs> there there it is you know there it is and the, the message here is I want people to I want people to see is no matter what you've gone through in your life, you are so worth being loved and so it's so worth giving love in, in return. And it doesn't make a difference who who you're sharing your life with, what your what your preference is, what your your sexual preference is or what your um relationship is with another human being nobody is here to judge anyone mm -hmm. nobody and loving freely loving someone honestly and loving someone and giving that opportunity to be loved and i i say that because again living a whole life without loving myself was really <clears throat> really a difficult time and now that i'm learning to love myself through through my through my through my therapy and and learning much more about myself through going through to past books and magazines that i've been in i'm trying to relive those moments in the way where where was i mentally because mentally capturing that image is now forever an imprint for the world to see when they come mm -hmm. across this magazine. It's that energy that you had at that very split moment that people are picking up on and looking through them. I'm going, whoa, whoa, okay, I was there. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm looking back at them because I have them put away. I'm, I don't think I pulled them out for about a year now. And I just haven't and I wouldn't look at them. That's very cool. Um, and, and another message that I've seen, that I've heard um, from what you were saying right now, um, Richard, is don't settle. So don't settle for something just because you want to be with someone. Don't settle for, if you see the red flags, let it go. If you, if you don't connect with that person, let it go. Because that, the person that's meant for you is out there. And when you're both ready, 
somehow, you know, you come together. That's what your story says. So you come together. It's synchronous to this because there's no, there's no coincidence, right? So that's the message that I'm hearing is don't settle for second best because the, the person for you is there. And, and, and by the sound of things, this relationship is beautiful where you talk, it's open, it's honest, but the start was with you loving yourself, right? Because only until when you were ready and you loved yourself enough could you actually come into communion with... Um... Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's taken a while for me to... You know, it, it took me a while to make that decision, you know, because, again, I didn't feel worthy. That's the yeah. word I was looking for. I didn't feel yeah. worthy. Um. You know, going through what going through what I was going through, you know, was simply a discussion because I was just pouring everything out and sharing whether 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 she was the therapist at that time that I needed it. All I know is she heard and she didn't judge. Mm -hmm. She understood. And it came it came through it, it came through every conversation, you know, it was just. And again, you know, it was simply just friends. There was a feeling, there was a feeling that I had, but I didn't know how to respond, react. I didn't know how to react on it because I never really asked anyone out like that. So it took two, what, two, two and a half years to ask that question or to say what I felt. That's the, that's the crazy thing. After like two and a half, two years, two and a half years, something like that, of sitting, talking, and again, we're just, I've had friends always, and I've talked to them, and I've expressed myself in ways of what I'm going through, or what I'm about, and there was no one that touched me in a way philosophically, met, um, spiritually than how she did. Mm. And I really had to sit back and say, yes, yes, I am worthy. I am lovable. I can give love. Mm -hmm. I want to give love. So with that said and done, you know, that's um, that's a very important, important time. It's, it's a very important time right now, the life that I'm living now for me to be to be OK, because many people that that feel that they're not worthy, it just plummets them into a darker depression to where they'll never feel love and see the light of, of day in a relationship with someone that is truly meant for you. And um, I don't, I don't, and I didn't want that opportunity to pass by. I really didn't. And um, it's, it's just an amazing thing. And I, I hope that when people hear this, they understand that, you know, Life is sometimes a trial and error basis. You know, you go through, you try this, try that, experiment with this, experience that, until you realize, wait a minute, I've done this, 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 and this, and this. But I really like the way this makes me feel. I like the way how I feel when I'm in this circle. And that's the way that I can be open and honest with that is I want to, I want to make sure that I'm safe. Mm. Mm. Everybody should mm. feel like they're mm. safe in a relationship, in a marriage, in a, in a union with someone as a partner of someone else, you know, there has to be safe, a safety zone that you feel when you enter that space with, with him or her. Very important. Yes. Very important. Yes. So, yes. yeah. Yes. 
Um, and again, I, I just want to, uh, the, the important thing is that once you realize that you were worthy, you had the courage to do what you, you thought you could never do and, and, and express your yeah. feelings to her. But also you, you realize that you could receive that love, uh, which, is, which is huge as well. Because how many times do we go through life and we have this feeling for someone, but we're so scared to approach that person that we let that opportunity by go by and and then you know then it's lost so i guess my what i'm saying is that if you have that opportunity if there's even that spark that little spark at least take that step and have the courage to speak to speak it out right if it's meant to be you'll come together if not well at least you had the courage to speak up and to 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 be yourself enough to love yourself enough to have the courage to do it Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and again, you know, I, I'm glad we were able to, to, to discuss this because I think with, with people that are, you know, with everybody that goes through what they're going through, life gives you battles. Life gives you everything that you can imagine that can either make you or break you. And sometimes you're, you're wondering and you're walking that tightrope is, and I walked that tightrope forever. It's like, am, am I worthy enough? Can, can I, can I talk to this person about this, how I feel? Or can I talk to this one about how I don't want to be with them or how I don't want to deal with them because of the way that they are? Um, it's very difficult that once you reach that point and you feel that you know 100% that you are ready to make that next move, that then you know that you are open to really live the life that you want to live. Yes. And nobody, nobody can tell you differently. Nobody can tell you how to, um, why did you? No, these are opportunities that only come to you that you can either, like you said, you can take them and, and, and run with it, or you can sit there and ponder and talk about, well, if I could have done that, I should have done that. No, no. And ending with that, it's like an I am, I can, I will. I, yes. I've spoke that many times to others that I was coaching and working with, but I never used it for myself in many ways mm -hmm. um, in certain aspects of my life because I was always dangling with the fact that I'm not good enough for anybody. I have nothing to offer anybody. I cannot bring anything to a relationship. I can't bring anything to anyone because I'm broken. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting, huh? It's it's actually beautiful because like yeah, like you were saying, um, you were broken. <coughs> I don't think, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a spiritual person, I don't, but I, I have to bring this in because we all say, I mean, if you go back to the Bible or whatever, it's like God made the world and he made us all part of him, right? Or her or it or the universe or whatever you want to call it, okay? Everyone has their own version. I'm just using God because it's easier for everyone to understand. So how, how, Richard, is it possible that we can't realize our worthiness? Because I don't think God, the universe or God or the divine would make junk. I don't think he'd make broken people. And yet so many of us go through life thinking that we're not worthy of a brilliant relationship. We're not worthy of love. We're not worthy of a good life. We're not worthy of anything. And that is, and that is sad. Um, just on, on a whole universal level. Yeah, so yeah. it's time to be able to look in the mirror and say, you know what? I'm beautiful because I'm me. Because that's what makes us beautiful, our uniqueness. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and your style and, your, and your, your modeling and your photos and whatever. And it's not only that, it's what, whatever you're made of. It's not only what people see on the outside, it's what's inside. And we forget about that. We Absolutely. forget how we've all got we've all got something to offer to the world and it's time to realize that and to see how far we've come up to yeah. this point yeah and it, it again it's 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 that's another i think that's another topic for another for another uh, podcast that we're going to end that we're we're going to end up doing but the self worth part of it and how you see yourself is very important and 
you know, um, and for those of you, and I, I, I'm speaking for myself, that I just always felt like I was not good enough. I felt like I wasn't worthy to to do anything like that or to be in a relationship or, or do this and do that. There was always that self-doubt and, again, self-sabotage. When you start mm -hmm. feeling like that, then you break it away. You break things away that will just yes. – that were meant to be – in the universe aspect, because you just basically shot that away, closed that door yourself. The door wasn't shut for you to move on to another level of greatness. That door was shut because you refused to open it and to let yourself in and to accept, you know. And again, it's taken a long, long, long time for me to really harness and grasp this look of what I am, who I am. I didn't really look into the mirrors looking like, oh my God, you look like this, you look like that. No, I was looking in the mirror because I didn't like what I would see. And then I made it a point where I wasn't looking in the mirror or when I did look in the mirror, I just, I, I just got so depressed. Keep in mind, you know, this is all through the modeling time and, and the move, making the making of the movies. I just didn't see it or didn't feel it. Mm. And it was about time that I shared my my thoughts with people that so they understood that like, where I'm coming from. What you see on a picture does not say a thousand words because you have no idea what that person is going through. Yeah. Yeah. Never should you judge another because they are jumping down the street because they are so happy and so full of joy and so full of life. Little did you know that they were willing to take their life a day ago because of the way they were thinking. They just had a moment of, of inspiration. Let them be, let them be, let them be, let them be who they want to be. Everybody deserves that right to feel yes. how they feel and to love the way you love. Most importantly here, this is for the sober community is for allow people to recover the way they recover. Mm. Not, mm. not, there's not one mold that fits all. Everybody recovers their own way. Mm. And um, yeah, that's, that's what I, that's what I'm going to end with right there. I think that, yeah. Thank you, Richard. I think that's a good place to end this one. But I think um, we need to do another one topic on self worth. That is yes worth a whole a whole um, episode because it's such an important topic. Because it's not just the 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 exterior like you were saying there's so much more to it so thank you thank you thank you um richard for being here this was so thank so you great. karina thank you. this was a great episode and thank you for sharing and because and thank you for sharing your insights and your life because that is so um it's so difficult on so many levels so i appreciate you i appreciate you being here thank you and thank you, everyone, for listening and, and share this because it's such a, a, an insightful episode. And um, subscribe, too, so we can all join in the conversation and share the love. It's all about the ripple effect and sharing one person at a time. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank Richard. you, Karina. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. And bye. Bye.